Hello everyone, welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more exciting true crime content. Today we look at a businessman that's been found to have been acting reasonably to defend himself when a suspected gangster was killed with his own gun during a fight at coroner's rule. Security worker Stephen Aki Akinyemi, 44, was shot on the left temple during a tussle with his friend Aaron Colan on February the 9th, 2010. The fight took place in Mr. Colan's home, a converted chapel in Elderly Edge, Cheshire, where he had arranged a meeting to try and end a feud between Mr. Akinyemi and another man who could not be named for legal reasons. Mr. Colin, 45, who was 6 foot 4 inches tall, and the muscular Mr. Akinyemi, who was 5 foot 10 inches, had been in on the verge of becoming a professional boxer. Caught in a small and dark ensuite bathroom, the inquest at London Royal Court of Justice was told. Mr. Akinyemi, who had studied martial arts and been a competitive bodybuilder, was wearing body armour under his clothes, but Mr. Colin would not have had time to be aware of this as they grappled. At the end of the inquest on Thursday, the coroner rejected short from conclusions of misadventure, lawful or unlawful killing, or accidental death to deliver a narrative conclusion. He told the court that Stephen Akinyemi, in an attempt to coerce a third party into a course of action, produced a gun to reinforce his demand. The gun, which was at all times held by Mr. Akinyemi, and whose finger was on the trigger, was discharged four times. One of those discharges caused a bullet to go into Stephen Akinyemi's head, fatally wounding him. Mr. Colin told a previous inquest in October 2011 that Mr. Akinyemi pulled a gun on him and it went off during a struggle in which he got stabbed several times. Cheshire coroner Nicholas Reinberg recorded an open verdict saying he had difficulty accepting Mr. Colin's version of events, but following an application by Mr. Colin for a judicial review to the High Court in February 2012, that inquest was quashed with a fresh one was ordered with a different coroner. Mr. Colin was initially accused of murdering Mr. Akinyemi, but the Crown Prosecution Service dropped the charge because it could not prove Mr. Colin, who suffered stab wounds to his arms and neck, was not acting in self-defense. Delivering his conclusion at the end of the second inquest, Mr. Richmond said he was satisfied that Mr. Akinyemi and Mr. Colin, who had known each other since the 1990s, had been on good terms when the fatal fight occurred. Mr. Colin was hoping to act as a mediator between his friend and another man over nicknames. Mr. Richmond said it was highly significant that Mr. Colin chose to broker the deal at his home, as he was satisfied that he would never have invited his friend to the house as he had he suspected he was carrying a weapon or intended violence. He had texted him saying, don't pick up before calling him, and pretended he had not got through when the man answered the phone the inquest heard. Mr. Richmond said that Mr. Collins' conduct had been necessary and reasonable in response to a sequence of events that unfolded unexpectedly and very quickly seven years ago. He also found that the businessman was someone who valued his friends and was loyal to them. Mr. Akinyemi could be violent and a bully, and had a propensity to carry knives, the coroner said. Sending his condolences to the family, he remarked that any untimely death was a tragedy. After the ruling which Mr. Collins was in court for, his lawyer, David Mason QC, addressed the coroner on behalf of his client. He thanked Mr. Richmond for his thorough handling of the inquest, which had been a long and difficult journey. He added that the ruling had restored Mr. Collins' faith in the justice system, which was shaken following the first inquest, and was also a lovely, much-loved family man. A businessman who has given up a mansion after it was linked to drugs cash has hit back at the National Crime Agency. Aaron Collin, 44, surrendered the £600,000 house in Alderley Edge in Cheshire after a High Court judge granted a possession order on July 20th. The property has since been vacated and arrangements are being made to take possession. Mr. Collin, who had previously been cleared of killing three people, has fought the order for four years and claims the law enforcement agency has wrongly hounded it. In a statement, Mr. Collin said that he was innocent of any wrongdoing and the agency had been misrepresenting him, adding that he wouldn't lose a penny from the sale of his house, which he said had been purchased on a 100% interest-only mortgage. He said, I brought the house with no deposit and 100% interest-only mortgage. This means I did not put one penny into the purchase, and better still, the deal meant that the interest payments equated to less than half that which it would have cost me to rent. I have now researched the position the NCA have found themselves in, they have to sell to the highest bidder, they have to pay off the mortgage when they do. The only way there could be any adverse cost to me is if the NCA went against their own rules and tried to purposefully sell it for less than the mortgage value. This would mean that I would be liable to pay the difference. However, I've made a bid for £1 above the mortgage value to ensure that cannot happen. The Stockport businessman claimed that the court had been told lies during the case, and that he had been prevented from using evidence which backed up his account. He added, I had recently been released from cases perpetrated by the NCA, which were provably malicious. I then found myself in this case involving my home, 
brought by the same agency. They had managed to gain an unfair advantage whilst I was fighting the previous case. For example, I was precluded from being able to call evidence or cross-examine witnesses and in this vacuum they were able to lie and then secure the order against my house. He spoke out after the culmination of long-running civil recovery proceedings. In March 2012, a High Court judge ruled that Mr. Collins' home had been purchased through drug dealing in the Stockport area. It was ruled by the court that Mr. Collins lived on the proceeds of crime from 1999 until at least April 2004. The NCA argued that his meagre income over the relevant time frame could not have covered the money he spent extravagantly restoring the house. The businessman has no convictions for drug dealing and was cleared of the murders of Chris Little in 1996 and David Barnshaw in 2002. He was also arrested over the death of Stephen Akinyemi in the violent struggle in his home in 2010 but those charges were dropped. Mr. Akinyemi died after being shot in the head during a violent struggle with Mr. Collin, who suffered multiple stab wounds. Mr. Collin was given 90 days to hand over the keys to Brook Lane Chapel, which he brought in 2007, and it was surrendered last month. The NCA spokesman said, we can confirm that the property has been vacated and the NCA has taken possession as per the order granted by the High Court on the 20th of July. A decision over the disposal of the property will be made in due course. Mr. Collin has previously said that the case is biased and based on a pack of lies and said he may even buy back the house once it's been seized. He launched a claim against the NCA and one of its investigators, insisting he was never involved in dealing drugs. But his complaints were rejected by a High Court official and later confirmed by a senior judge. Mr. Collins said that he had started proceedings against the NCA to bring them to public account. He added they have attempted to strike out these proceedings yet again to try and avoid being brought to book. The next hearing is on December the 10th. Whilst we'll never be able to prove what happened in that violent struggle, do you believe Mr. Collins that the NCA is targeting him? Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and a share, and leave any thoughts or suggestions you have in the comments section. We love to read through them all. And if you're new but enjoy UK true crime content, then subscribe to see when our newest video releases. And as always, stay safe.